Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never role-played before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Great Wizard Bukake, your host. Our heroes have found Fernald the Fierce. Reginald was forced to reveal himself to get into the Dark Spike compound. Moss interrogated the troopers hunting for a cleric, and Quinny determined no one was hiding on the second floor. What will they do now they've learned Grace and Typhus is kidnapping soldiers to maintain his powers? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons. You've managed to track down Fernald the Fierce, a hmm. one of the few remaining clerics um, that uh, stayed in a car after the cleric purge uh, to drive anyone with cleric or paladin powers out uh, and ensure that no untoward healing magic was uh, or turn undead magic was going to be used against. Uh, Grayson Typhus and his armies. Um, Fernald Fierce is an incredibly average looking guy. Uh, you would, uh, like, even just looking past him, the details just kind of disappear. He is just a very, very average looking fellow. And you get the sense that this is very well cultivated and curated. This is a very important piece of his his undercover operation. He is, of course, dressed in the uh, the dark spike gear, so a little, little overdone. But he's managing to tread that line perfectly of just being in the middle where he's Staying out of overdoing it and and uh, certainly, but still enough that he looks, you know, committed to the cause. Hmm. Um, all of you have met up in the second floor of the barracks where there have been reports of people disappearing. And of course, those reports have been kind of slapshod given the, you know, general state of a car right now. But uh, it was something that Fernald wanted to investigate before he left town um, to see if he could... Uh, Bring some light to a protostop too. He's just told you that he believes people are being abducted to be used as fuel of a sort um, for uh, Grayson Typhus's phylactery, which is where we find ourselves now. So, of course, we have beloved long-term characters Slaughter Horse, Schmengus, <laughs> Reginald, and Butthole. Slaughter Horse is technically downstairs, but at yeah. this point, Reginald would go get yeah. Slaughter Horse and basically do a classic spiel he's used to buy time before where he's like, I found something upstairs. Slaughter horse, I need you to see this. Everyone in this room, I have memorized the position you are standing in. <laughs> if you move so much as an inch, I will come down on you like the wrath of every god of war in every dimension that exists. Hold position! And then he'll just march out with Slaughter Horse and be like, well, that buys us about 30 minutes usually. So. <laughs> and Julian South Beach is just like, yeah! I got him, sir. And he pulls out the clipboard and starts, like, marching up and down the line. Majestic. So, <laughs> welcome to the conversation. Uh, all right, so, uh, Moss, just to get you a quick catch-up here. Uh, this is Fernald. Uh, Hi. You were doing a great Hello, search. Hello, Fernald. But spotted Fernald. Uh, uh, apparently, Grace and Typhus is kidnapping soldiers and, I don't know, dropping their souls into a phylactery or something. Fernald, whatever details you have, we'll yeah, be very no, much no, like you, know. You've pretty well nailed it. I mean, uh, all information about uh, liches was, was locked off from us, of course, once Typhus arrived, but... Previously, we were quite concerned about the possibility of, of liches. Uh, Lord Archibald, in particular, was concerned about one known as a Sererac, uh, a, a lich of, of great renown. But I think that was more a what if this guy showed up and started kicking our asses, how would we stop him kind of situation. Um, being a member of the Cleric Corps, we looked into ways that we could perhaps counteract a lich, whether it be a Sererac or someone else. And, of course, learned about uh, phylacteries. There isn't much information widely available, but we've looted a lot of libraries and we've burned a lot of churches. So we found a lot of uh, texts along the way. And essentially what our unit uh, was was circling, and I, I believe the, the most salient point here, is that uh, phylacteries require souls uh, to continue to stay essentially healthy and charged. It would seem to me that now that Aka is triumphant and somewhat, uh, how shall we put this? Um, we're kind of just riding steady right now. There isn't a lot of, uh, there aren't a lot of spare souls kicking around. And I believe that in desperation, Typhus has started to actually abduct his own soldiers to do this. Um, if the phylactery is not fed souls, uh, it, it's the lich's grasp on on uh, reality begins to drift a bit and it is quite bad for mm. them. So I have been trying to ascertain how he's obtaining these folks, although it's very easy for him to abduct whoever he wants, uh, but more importantly, track them. Uh, they all enter the Black Castle, but 
I do have some intel about where the phylactery might be stored. I am so glad we found you because that's kind of a thing we didn't know what to do about. So where do you think the phylactery is? There is a vault that previously was uh, renowned as being uh, Archibald's main storehouse. However, my sources suggest that it is not, in fact, held there. It would seem that uh, Grace and Typhus does not trust the safe spots of his uh, deposed former... I don't even know what their relation would be, because Grace had married... Emily, and Emily's married to God. Regardless, he doesn't want to use uh, old dead husband's locker, I guess. Um, it's what, from what I understand, he had a special space built in the furnace, uh, in the forge. He built something, and then he had it moved into, from the sounds of things, the, just the, essentially the, the, the top floor of the castle. He seems to be holding it in, in his personal mm. quarters somewhere. Uh, we don't know exactly where, and more importantly, we don't know exactly what. But it would seem he has forged a new object. There seems to have been some talk of how a vial is too easily smashed. Uh, I'm not sure if that means anything to any of you. Yeah, but... no, that checks out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he seems to have forged something rather hearty, uh, and it is believed to be in, in his quarters. Unfortunately, that is one of the most secure spaces within the castle, but at least it is not within the vault. Okay, so... We're here. We know it's within his quarters. We know he made something special to hide it in and that it's not a vial because he wanted to put it in something that's stronger. We have to go to the Coliseum because we're trying to save uh, Baldarian, son of Maldarian, because apparently he's supposed to fight Brutalitrix and the rumor is he's going to get fucking squished. Did Standis Wittis die? Oh, that's who I'm after. Yeah, Standis Wittis is in the fight. Baldarius is in hiding. Oh, Baldarian, well, that's it. son Baldarian. of Baldarian, is in hiding. Correct. That makes sense. He that is a coward. Worse. Okay, then <laughs> correct it. You know, we're going to save somebody at the fucking Coliseum. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> once that's done, we probably need to go to the forge then to get some plans. Well, we need to this. get the armor picked up at the forge so we can oh, go. We got yes. no, no, but I mean the big forge where they, they do the zombie shit because it's got the plans oh, for whatever right. the phylactery is hiding mm. inside of. So if we can get the plans, we know how to get in. Right. Two different forges. My bad. Yeah. Well, we got to go to the blacksmith to get the armor. We got to yeah, go yeah. to the big forge and to get the blacksmith that plan. is like basically like almost like a, a little, uh, like basically a market outside of the yeah, forge. Okay. So you yes. can do a one stop shop, but it's it's two separate, uh, yeah, two separate places. Okay. You, you can't so, just go threaten a goblin and be like, here's the phylactery plans. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They're a bigger, but, but, Warham's shop is next to the Ford. Yeah, it's, it's like a, you can think of it as like t-shirt stalls out in front of like a cool arena. So okay, the so Forge is like a massive factory and then there's like food carts outside. Great. So we'll pick up our shit. We'll steal some other shit. Go to the Coliseum. <laughs> start a civil war. That all checks out. Um, <laughs> here's my question for you, uh, Fernald. These, uh, these dark spikes, I can't figure out if they're all murderous psychopaths or if they're just kind of stupid and got led into the wrong thing. What's what's your take on it having been in here? Well, I mean, they're they're soldiers of a car, like like anyone. I mean, all of us have been searching for new purpose. I, I think ever since, uh, well, since you died. He points at Archibald, um, or Reginald. He's <laughs> like, you died, and Archibald died, and. And uh, when Emily was killed and then resurrected, our, our whole society has, has shifted. And with our new dread lord and the army of the undead, who needs soldiers when you have an infinite army of corpses who make more corpses, who then rise and help the corpses? We've given all of our best weapons and armament to fucking corpses. The factories that used to crank out the best tools for us no longer do. I mean, you may have seen some of the dead if, if you've truly been hiding out. In the town, you mentioned the mines. You've I'm surely seen people who died in the uh, in, in the marketplace hiding, and their old shitty weapons. We're like all of our best armaments are going to corpses. We don't make war on anyone anymore. We don't have anything here. We've tried so many fucking things to find new purpose. We made a fucking paint night. Have you ever been to a paint night? It's exhausting. You could just do it at home. We don't need to do it in a fucking room together. So. 
all of us are just trying to find something we can fucking hold on to that makes us feel like we're a part of something. And when the Horde showed up, it felt like a car perfected. However, having now observed them a bit, the Dark Spikes have no fucking clue what the Horde is. They're just guessing, and their best guess is pretty fucking stupid. And the Horde seems to just be a bunch of horrifying murder hobos, so that's its own problem. And yes, people are excited about going to war, but it sounds like their world, their army is losing, and we're just going to be added as padding. Oh yeah, let me confirm for you as someone who's uh, from there originally, uh... Yeah, you're going to get absolutely fucking dumpstered there the moment we go. you go over. You're all dead. Honestly, you may as well just become zombies now. That war is going to chew those fucking morons up downstairs so goddamn fast. That's uh, it. If we put you in charge of them, do you think you could try to keep these fuckers on the level if we can give you like a theme to kind of rally around? Well, I mean, the only person who's ever tried that was executed as a traitor. So I don't exactly want people doing a hand signal for furl, you know? No, no, no. We don't need that. What I'm saying is... All right, we have a shitload of adamantine armor on suits inside a mine that's inside the market. So you could take them down and we could create an army like, I don't know, the adamantine legion. Suit them up, get them in the best shit that 600 years ago had to offer. Uh, (laughs) Then we bring them up and they're part of an army being led by two princes known as the Resurrectors, where they can take back a car slaughter the undead, and become, arguably, the best and most effective military on the planet. Then they destroy injustice and evil around the whole world. It's a great How's comeback story. I mean, that does sound excellent, and a lot of the, the non-Dark Spikes will absolutely follow that banner. As long as the, the Horde maintains a presence here, though, they will be attractive to idiots who think that it will be all cool and, and and such over there. So, yes, some will follow, I'm sure, those who are just seeking new purpose. Others believe, truly believe that to become the greatest warriors, they must go fight in the forever war and that they will become equals to to the Horde. For them, it, it, would, it would take some rather large disruption of their image of that. I mean, I guess you could fuck up the parade, but There are a lot of Horde people there, so you may just have to accept that some folks will still remain your enemies. God, the parade's still happening, even though, I mean, I hope you heard, the portal blew up. Someone blew up the portal. Uh, It was us. We blew up the portal. Yes, I gather. It was cool. Attractive, charismatic someones blew up blew up the portal. Oh, so these two charismatic, uh, charming, handsome someones and you. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um... Fine. You understand, though, that Lord Typhus made contact before they started building a portal. Is there another way to go to and from the Horde There must be, because it's a real chicken and egg problem. Uh, The Horde found some way of making contact, and then we started building the the portal bridge to bring over all of the the, the dead, uh, what did he call it, Uh, quantum energy... Whatever's whatever used to power the guns of a car. Oh, those were fun. But when they stopped working, they they were just heavy metal. We've been melting them down. But it seems he has some use for the cores on the other side. Mentioned something about uh, um, a new way to charge more quantum energy, bringing back quantum energy. Uh, I don't know if that means anything to any of you. Well, it doesn't mean anything fucking good. Okay. No. Um, so the parade's still happening. We didn't really factor the parade into things, but... Maybe we could... Typhus was charging stuff with mages before. You think it's... I, honestly, I think trying to figure out the metaphysics of how he's charging things is... Yeah. like it, It's easier Maybe. to go like, what's he doing? Think he's using clerics now? I... Fer- Fernald actually raises a hand and is like, all of the combat wizards have been absent. Well, all right, there's that then. <sighs> okay, we know. He wants to teleport over to the bunker universe and he wants to power it. How he does it... Eh. <laughs> Wow. We gotta stop him is the important thing. Yeah. So we gotta get the forge thing so we know how to get to his phylactery. We gotta go to the Coliseum and make a big fucking stink. And then how are we dealing with this fucking parade? If we rally an army by then, you know, maybe we take him into the parade. I I mean we're what we're out of explosives, I assume. Yeah, we used all of them for the for the bridge. We uh there's still a corpse pile. There's a par- oh man, people talk about this parade coming up, Mister uh, Fernald. Uh, when and where? Oh, it it was scheduled to be later today, and 
odds are if you blew up the portal gate, there'll be all the more reason to really sell people on this being an important thing. As I said, the, the true believers in the Horde will likely... You could dissuade them, but it seems to me the worst that happens if the parade happens is that you lose some of this army of resurrectioners, resurrectionists you want to make. So you could ignore it if you so chose. What do you think? Let it go or full-on literal clash of ideals on how Aka should have I mean, its future? They're not going to be able to fucking leave, and we don't need these horde assholes around. I kind of believe we got to try to protect the people that we're here to actually try to save, even from themselves. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm up for that, mm -hmm. but I don't have a plan for the parade. He uh, he looks around and says, y you mentioned the arena. It was your intent to rally the rally the crowds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was our plan, mm -hmm. was to go and then, like, declare ourselves as the princes and fucking fuck shit up. Well, if, if you make enough of a splash there, perhaps that could give you the army you need to drop the horde assholes, as you called them, in the parade. All righty, fuck it. Let's try that. That's pretty good. Uh, we could send message to the market. I mean, realistically, we could... If it's a Colosseum, there's going to be an armory for, you know, gladiatorial combat. So, hey, everyone, join the and, Tingler yeah. boys. And we could Let's have get a, into the armory and take it. If we could send a message to the marketplace, we could have all our people there bring up any adamantine suits that are useful and just slap them on people in the crowd so they got some decent armor. Well, Fernald, what do you, what do you say to uh, bringing a message over to uh, our little stronghold while you also administer some healing to some sick soldiers? If I have a chance to do healing, I, I must. All right, well, there's going to be a place for all those hardy and hail warriors of Akka to meet up and get armed, okay? <clears throat> As the younger folks in our regiment say, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Great. Then if you could do us a favor, and uh, anybody you think down there that's actually a good person who's just kind of caught up in the wrong thing that you can get on the right side of things pretty easily, we'll send them with you. And then we'll leave the rest of them here to just, like, go about their daily business as assholes. To be fair, we, we, we do a lot of war. <laughs> so we are all kind of bad people. I yeah, but good in the old Aka sense. I guess who, who down there is not, like, who can you... Fucking who will fight for us and who's just going to be a dark spike? <laughs> that I can what? do. Yes, this is yes. a fucking simple... I, this is a real dance, but like... I'm just a cleric trying my best to solve a mystery. I understand. So whoever is on t on team will work for princes if Fernald says yes. Fucking let's send them with you. Yes. And everybody else will leave there. And then uh, who do you think is probably the most promising of all the assholes downstairs for like to be the most evil Grace and Typhus horde person? Oh, uh, easily Julian South Beach. He talks about it all the time. He, he loves it. He... His, his given name is South Beach, but he, I know he, he really wants to change it to Typhus. He's just worried that'll get him in shit. All right, then I know exactly how we handle this. If you'll allow me, uh, King Butthole. Well, I... Oh, fuck. Okay, this is happening. Uh, It's going to be terrible, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you're not going to like this at all, <laughs> but I know how to deal with this the smartest way. Yes. <laughs> uh, and on the, on the way downstairs, uh, basically, Reginald just pulls Quinny aside and he's like, you, you think you could kill that South Beach guy really fast? Oh, okay. So it's your brilliant idea, but I got to do the murdering? Well, here's the thing. I got to go give a speech and then bring Julian up to get a medal. And then when I offer him the medal, you just stab the shit out of him until he's dead. Then we send off the weaklings and we leave kind of the rest of them here with the stupidest person in charge. Yeah, okay. I'm going to wait until you're putting the medal around his neck because that is kind of a requirement for me to do my best work, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm totally <laughs> you to basically have your hands on him. I'm going to distract the shit out of this guy. And then I'm going to say that he was the cleric all along and then he's going to be dead and we'll leave them in charge with the stupid person who's going to make terrible decisions on the battlefield and then they're going to lose. All right, give me a horde helmet or something. You're Schmengus. What do you need a horde helmet for? Oh, all right. If that if if the Schmengus cover is rock solid, then sure, I'm fine with that. I mean, up here where we blew it, no, but down there, oh, we got him. Okay. Uh, and he's just Reginald is just going to take charge and march back into the room with his gold coat to the center and like look around and say, "All right, Julian, did anybody move while we were up there?" No, sir. And he just slaps the nearest person. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you've all passed my cleric test, and I'm here to actually figure out who should be in command of this unit. And I choose, and he just paces along the line, <laughs> looking at each of them as though he's finding them wanting, and then says, 
Julian South Beach. And the guy who was talking to Moss, who is overdone, just burst into tears. He he fucking wanted this so bad. Um, and Julian just flips him the middle finger and um, and uh, just marches very proudly up, uh, dropping his clipboard casually as he goes. Because now he is no Emily. Now he is a commander. And Reginald will peel off one of his golden gloves and say this is the sign of my trust in you as a leader and hold it out for Julian to slip a hand into it. And the moment it happens, he just, he does not look to Quinny because he's a pro. But Quinny, you can just feel him looking Julian in the eye meaningfully and looking to you at the same time. Um, And as he does so, he just like looks at you and you can almost hear him saying under his breath like, one day I will kill you and take your place. Shit, did I say that out loud? (laughs) Quinny is uh, running along the top of each bunk in, <laughs> in this. Dear, dear, yeah, dear, yeah. Dear. <laughs> Just to get that verticality that he loves to have as he then descends on this guy with a uh, breach of contract in hand uh, to to strike. You're going to be so mad when you find out this guy's full of vines. I am going to be so mad. Uh, so that's a uh, 22 to hit. That'll hit. Okay. Mm. Oh, two sixes is good. Um, 12, and then these other numbers are fucking shit. <laughs> um, 18, 3, 21 uh, on the first attack. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thirsting Blade, baby. 14 plus 12. That'll do, I think. Yes, yes okay. <laughs> shall. Uh, and then, oh shit, uh, add 7 as well. I forgot the plus 7. I think the first number was 20. 21. 21 plus 7 to 28. 28 yeah. I apologize. It's all um, good. 9 plus 7 for 16 on top of that. 28, 38, 44. Julian South Beach doesn't need further numbers. He only had 35 <laughs> to play with in the first place. Okay. Yeah. Reginald has blood sprayed across his face, which is what he was hoping for oh, dramatically. Yeah. And he turns back to the rest of the group and just with his now bare hand, just smears it back across his face as though he's wiping his forehead and says, That was the cleric! <laughs> Gasps. Shock. <laughs> Appall. And now, with him fallen, there can only be one who can lead this unit. You! And he points to the big, dumb, crying guy, because he's like, that guy's going to be a fucking wiener. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, that guy steps forward and says, you will, you will not regret uh, choosing the, the mighty Pepper Mindy to lead this unit. I will not. Pepper Mindy is now in charge. You will follow every order Pepper Mindy gives. Also, we will be taking a small number of select warriors as chosen by my new assistant. And he points to Fernald because he did not learn Fernald's cover name. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. And uh, Pepper Mindy says, permission to offer suggestions from my unit, sir. Denied. Fernald <laughs> 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 gets to make his fix. <laughs> Peppermint wipes the tears from previously crying that are now like tears of joy away, smearing the black makeup that was too much to begin with. Just looks looks like a mess. Yep. Just a Robert Pattinson Batman without the cowl, you know, just like mm, black yeah. smears everywhere. Um, as you, yeah, so Fernald quickly goes through and like picks the people who are most likely to join up um, and nods to you. And that's where Reginald just says, dismissed, uh, and leads everybody the hell out of there because that was everything he needed. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. Great. Uh, people, uh, th- they almost all uniformly like bow and do the the salute of a ka to uh, Slaughter Horse specifically on the way out because mm-hmm. they're all so fucking scared of you that they think it's just good policy. Like you're the Chad underbottom to them. Like yeah. they don't know what your deal is. They just know that you're really scary. Uh. Moss just gives, like, finger waves to everyone. <laughs> just, like, very casual, like, bye. <laughs> yeah, very, uh, very upsetting. All right. And then it's just, like, marching outside, marching away. Uh, march waving, a little faster. Yeah, <laughs> waving goodbye to Fernald and then we we'll peel off and, like, speeding the fuck up to go back to the forge. The bottle's like, that wasn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, does he notice <laughs> Reginald's blood smeared face? Oh, he was in the room. Uh, like he was there as a prisoner. So everybody saw it. But Butthole was like, I think Butthole with Reginald's stories was expecting like, and now everyone in this room must kill the person to their yeah. left. And it was like, anything short of a decimation was like, oh, that was so palatable. Admittedly, I was also expecting that. So yeah. here we go. Great. And then he, on the way past, he's going to look at you and be like, I'm a little worried about Quitty though. <laughs> just keep on trucking to the forge. Yeah, it's just got those shmengus ways about him now. Yeah. Um, okay, so... <laughs> A little schmengus and all of it. There it is. <laughs> you arrive uh, back at uh, Warham's Weapon Emporium, and uh, Warham has been working hard uh, to make metal armor. You realize he's bad at it, but he has been working hard. Um, so he kind of comes out and he's like, Oh, uh, welcome back. Welcome back. I've got a fantastic suit for you to look at. Here you go. Um, and he pulls out, like, and it it's. Uh, it, it is the Wish.com equivalent of a Forsaken helmet. <laughs> so it's like he did his best, but his best is not good. He's much better with wood <laughs> as evidence from his 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 best stuff. So it's just like slightly janky. It's like at a bad angle, but you can tell it is legitimately the best he could do. It'll look good from a distance. The, col- yeah. the Coliseum isn't an up-close thing. This will be fine. And the spikes just have to look spiky and they're going on top of my metal armor anyways. So this is acceptable. Good. <laughs> uh, so Warham. Let's say we wanted to get like a tour of the Big Forge. Could you make that happen for us if we gave you a bunch of money? I, yes, with money, I, I could probably bribe some people. I'm not really allowed back in there. You may have noticed from my questionable talents that I am not really the best with the metal. So they kind of told me to stay out, but I might be able to bribe some people to get you in. Fabulous. We'll take this order, and here's a shitload of money. <laughs> Give him an ungodly amount of money, because they, like, getting a tour of this place means we can walk Quinny in. Fucking, yeah. he can just go boost plans or shit from the office, and we can get out again. Uh, he just nods and says, okie dokie, uh, and uh, disappears, comes back a few minutes <laughs> yeah, later. Yeah, while that happened, Buttle's just like, okay, Quinny, we're going to go inside, and then just... Steal whatever you can find in the foreman's office. We need to find this. I will look for plans and blueprints, anything locked up. Yes. Great. If you can't find any plans or blueprints or anything that's locked up that's actually going to do this for us, we're going to have to kidnap the foreman. So just be ready to, like, tie him up and carry him out. I'm not carrying anybody. Well, then just be ready to tie him up and then drag him to somewhere where Reginald can carry him out. (laughs) All right. All right. I'll be ready for that, I guess. (laughs) It's going to be great. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so with that, uh, Warham returns with um, a, a tour guide who is frustrated because they are clearly like someone who works the forge. They're wearing like a big, one of those heavy, heavy like blacksmith's aprons, giant forearms. Um, she's got like a shaved head and it's just like so fucking mad about it. <laughs> but also you can hear the jingle jangle of, of gold as, as she moves and you're well aware that she is, uh, she's been paid off rather handsomely. Um, and she says, yeah, okay, so you're the ones taking the tour of the forge. That's right. That's, yep, that's us. That's correct. Can't wait to see how it all works out. Okay, listen, uh, I'm happy to make this happen for you, but you got to level with me. Who the fuck are you? Why are you here? And you just see Butthole and <laughs> Reginald both look to Quinny. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> and Quinny says... Uh, um, Oh, God, this is under Typhus control. He can't give the this is Reginald <laughs> thing. So he, he's just, uh, um, these are uh, wealthy warlords looking to add their forces to <laughs> Typhus's. Uh, and we just wanted to see how the operation works. Um, and she nods and says, yes, I suppose parade day would be the day that would attract all the shitty warlords. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, <laughs> and she, she looks uh, at. Please let it pass, my lords. Uh <laughs> These, uh, these, these folk are, they do not speak for Lord Typhus, I'm sure. Well, no, obviously not. I no. just speak for me and the people who work the forge. We're always mad when assholes show up and want to see what we're doing. It stops us from doing what we're doing. But hey, you know, <laughs> she jangles the apron. She's like, your gold spends as good as anyone else's, I guess. Um, and she keeps looking over uh, at you, Moss. And for a second, you almost feel like she's checking you out. And then you realize it's the chair. She is just like, she is eye-fucking that chair. Like, she's clearly so like enraptured by the design and the crafting. Cause again, it's like, it's from another world. Yeah. It doesn't like there are combat wheelchairs here, but they don't look like this one specifically. Um, and uh, she, after she deals with kind of like apologizing sort of to, to Quinny the warlords, it's like, and um, uh, hey there, uh, strange gray friend. Uh, what's, what's the deal with your wheels? I don't understand the question. It's my mode of transportation. Looks badass as fuck. Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. 
can, can you tell me a bit about how, how, how it works? Like, you got a lot of upgrades on that thing. I've never seen. Those spider legs? Yes, and Moss Ma- <laughs> is just kind of like, feels a little bit exposed. It's like, where are my spider legs? Um, you can also tell her to fuck off. They, it's also totally annoying. They, they are. These are very personal questions. All right. Hey, uh, look, I'm just, just respect the game, you know? All right, fine. Fucking warlords. Um, and then she just like starts storming into the, the thing. All right, fucking here. Let's go go see the forge. Hey, look over there. There's some fucking molten shit. We pour that in. We make some stuff. What, what do you want to see? You want to see like the capability of the weapons? What do you need? And Quinny just wants to melt away. Yeah, this <laughs> as soon as we cross the threshold <laughs> to, to go up to the foreman's office. Yeah, I think this is the point where Reginald is immediately, because he's worked at a high level at the, the horde, he actually knows all the questions to ask about this, about like tensile strength. What's their rate of production how fast can they put them in not just creating blades but how much to buy like the unsharpened ones versus getting them sharpened off site like what's the trade-off what's the quality of the steel i i think butthole's mind kind of explodes because he doesn't track any of these details Hmm. as leadership and it's one of those things you don't always realize but one of reginald's best stats is intelligence so for him to talk through the science and shit he's actually far more equipped to do that than than other people so he's just trying to drag this out in a technical way while also learning about the capabilities mm-hmm. because Reg was thinking far enough ahead that he's like, well, if we win, this is going to be our forge. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are we going to do with this army? No one likes us. We're going to need shields. <laughs> sure. So, um, Quinny, uh, if you can roll stealth, please, I will roll... Uh, 26. Yeah, all right. I, uh, you beat me by 10. 10 whole points, which is a lot. So... Um, the tour guide uh, doesn't notice you disappear because basically as soon as Reginald like kicks in, she it basically goes from being like salty person who is frustrated about probably, I think she, like you can tell she was expecting like, how many spikes can I get though? Hmm. Can you make it look <laughs> very cool? And instead it's like highly, highly technical questions. So she immediately snaps into like highly technical answers. Um, and you can tell she's getting a little bit lost in talking shop. Uh, and she basically explains uh, that the process they're in currently is melting down the frames of all the guns uh, and repurposing the metals, um, which are of such high quality and high uh, – because the 2099's capability to – The metallurgy. Yeah, really the metallurgy good. is like fucking light years ahead. So turning into weapons and armor uh, for the soldiers who will be going through also to help supply the horde. Um, and to help armor, uh, arm and armor any new zombies. Because, of course, they're they're not, like, the zombies aren't just killing soldiers. I mean, like, you're a soldier now. They're, like, there's a lot of zombies that are just, like, punching out of graves and stuff that they need to, to arm up. So she's going on about their, their production speed and everything else. Um, the only difficult part of the process, it sounds like, is extracting the quantum cores, um, which seems to be a pain in the ass that no one likes to do because it's slow and delicate, whereas everything else is, like, proper smashy, smashy, forgy. Um, Wait, why is it slow and delicate? Well, um, they, they, I thought they're used. They are, but uh, as we understand it, they're going to be re- recharged uh, over in, in the uh, the other world. So we've we've been instructed not to damage them. Uh, honestly, you know, I, I've been asked to take apart a lot of stuff and put it back together. And from the way that uh, Lord Typhus and uh, the uh, I don't know if we call him the Lord Black Spider or just the Black Spider, but the way the two of them were talking mm. about it, it seems that. Uh, the capability to make more of these things is somewhat limited. Uh, it sounded almost like uh, Lord Typhus had a place he could make them, but he doesn't have that anymore, so they're now very, very valuable to Yes, him. yes, we're aware. Yeah, but when they when they were taking their tour yesterday, uh, they seemed very insistent, and uh, Lord Typhus was very uh, strict with a few people who were not handling them with the appropriate care. Okie dokie. Mm. I mean, Reginald just goes right back into fucking technical shit because he also wants to know, like, is it possible to quote unquote purchase stuff made from these rifles? How many are left over? He's doing the math for like, if this works today (laughs) and it's re-gearing, how many troops can he armor in the next little stretch? Because Butthole has just thought, like, we could turn this kingdom around. And Reginald is like, we started a war with the whole world. <laughs> and we're going to turn off the zombies, which means we're going to need a fucking army immediately. Right. Um, can you roll me an insight check, please, as Reginald? Or actually, uh, Butthole, you can do one. Okay. Because you're just, you're, you're not listening to the technical details. You're just listening to stuff. Uh, Moss, you can do one, too. Butthole, dirty 20. 
Uh, Moss is 15. 15, okay. Um, Reginald's right back to it, uh, which is odd, but both of you clocked the fact that uh, she just said the black spider took a tour yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So, um, yeah, she's going on about like how, you know, they're not available for purchase right now. They will be eventually. There's a lot of guns. They're all useless. A lot of them have broken quantum cores. So like there's some that they're able to just kind of mill. Mm-hmm. But um, no, it's it's a basically it, it's kind of like a in in classic warlord fashion. It's like yeah, I'll build you weapons after I'm done giving. Like when my boss says he's got enough, then I can make you some. But yeah. she assumes you're joining up with the horde anyway. So oh, absolutely, know, and she's not aware that Grace and Typhus plans to sacrifice this whole planet. So like, oh, man. there's not really a tomorrow if they lose this fight. Yeah, he didn't send that out as like a company wide memo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, Quinny. Um, you have slipped away. You are looking for the uh, the foreman's office. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, you make your way through the crowd. Um, again, having rolled a good stealth check, you just kind of do that. Uh, you make your way through the crowd and you find – it's very easy to find the office. This whole place looks like the uh, the factory at the end of Terminator 2. Okay. Where it's just like heavy metal. There's a lot of chains and stuff. And, it's, you know, like there's no safety protocols. Hmm. Everything is, is awful. Um, but, yeah, you find an office and it's um, – the office itself is still that industrial, like, cross-thatch metal grading and everything else. Um, but it is well organized. Um, again, there's, like, a military efficiency to it because it's a military forge. It's not just a forge. Um, inside, uh, there you find uh, the sort of, like, a forge of this size can't really be overseen by one person. So there seem to be about four people who each have their own kind of section that they're working in. And all of them are, are meticulously looking over documents and like making sure quotas are coming through. Um, one of them is uh, reading a report out loud to the rest of them uh, about the damage caused at the, the uh, portal bridge. Uh, and basically the amount of quantum cores that are, that, that were lost. Um, uh, another is just heads down um, in um, like just a records book trying to update it based on uh, the the orders and the speed at which they're they're coming through. You see one looking at a wall of uh, similar drawings to what the floppy hat guy was looking at in terms of the portal bridge. You can see she's trying to math out if another one can be built in time. Uh, and then finally, there's one um, just kind of wandering around, um, sort of like Ryan, you mentioned a couple episodes ago, like the person walking with purpose as though they're like hmm. the, the restaurant walk with purpose where you don't really want to be working. There's one person doing that. Um, but it's a pretty open room. Um, again, you've got two people at desks, one person at a board and one person wandering. What do you do? And I'm looking in, I guess, through like a window. Yeah, I think you're looking in through the, the window in the door. Uh, we okay. think this is a long rectangular room. The desks are all at the kind of big overseer's window. Yeah. So the people who are seated are seated there facing down into the forge. Um, the big kind of whiteboard situation is against the back wall. And then the wanderer is just kind of moving from shelf to shelf and like picking things up and looking at them and putting them down like they're in fucking L.A. Noir. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> They're all working on active projects, and I'm looking for completed projects. Do I see any kind of storage in this office? There's a door at the back. A door at the back. Yeah. The only way in, I'm assuming, is through the door that I'm at. Correct. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a door on the other side as well, but it's really the same situation. As from the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, are they working by torchlight, candlelight? How are they... Yeah, if they've got um, the drawings and paper. I'm assuming. Yeah, like, they've got they've got lanterns um, that seem to be kind of like magically charged. So they're they're giving off um, bright light in a small radius, if that makes sense. So it's not like the whole office is well lit because we're in a dark industrial forge situation. Mm-hmm. But in kind of a um, almost like a one foot sphere around these these lanterns, uh, mm-hmm. they they have it's just enough to. It's almost the equivalent of a nightlight, right? Like it's like good for you to read by, but someone else in the room could fall asleep. Is the kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Oh well, if it's not that well lit, I want to try to sneak in. Um, I want to. Uh, I want to knock on the door. Mm-hmm. And just say, uh, um, uh, just in like my gruffest <laughs> a car voice of just uh, of, of uh, hey, that fucking asshole goblin that we kicked out is trying to sneak back in here. Give us a hand. 
Roll a deception with advantage because you name dropped the asshole goblin. <laughs> deception. 24. <laughs> and just like the the two people at the desk um, stand up immediately and are like, oh, Warham, I swear, uh, that <laughs> fucking guy, I swear to Tempest. And just like rolling up their sleeves, like one grabs a crowbar and they're just like, we're going to get that little fucker out of here. <laughs> um, so they both storm past. Um, one of them sort of yells over uh, his shoulder like, yeah, you, you can keep working on uh, on the portal there, uh, uh, Smithers. Uh, you know, it, it seems like an important thing. We'll, we'll, we'll go deal with Warham. Personally, um, mm. and uh, the other one's like, "Yeah, this time it's personal." And I'm like, we just fucking yeah, all right. Um, and the one wandering guy's like, "Oh yes, yes, you should, you should all go, you should all go." Yep, all good here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's two remaining. Two remaining. As they leave on, on the doors uh, closing, I want to try and slink in, and basically. Uh, um, try to keep low so that the desks that people are sitting at uh, is blocking their view of me as I make my way to the back of the room. Okay, sure. Uh, roll a stealth check, please. This is the lowest one yet. Mm -hmm. uh, an 18. Uh, yeah, that's good enough, though. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you make your way to the back door. You, like, manage to dodge the wanderer, um, who, again, is really paying attention to nothing, so is kind of easy to dodge. Mm. Uh, and the person at the whiteboard is still just very like fixated on like you can see they've circled a lot of things being like where get diamond powder now question mark mm -hmm. um but uh yeah you make it to uh make it to the back door you find that it is locked i'm going to attempt to pick the lock yeah, that's sleight of hand baby mm -hmm. uh i got something for this as well plus one to lock pick check right uh oh good lord okay sorry <laughs> Uh, 35. <laughs> Wait, and how far does Moss need to be away from you to get your friend bonus? <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this isn't well, that, a save. That's for saves, but... Oh, uh, yeah. okay, yeah. never mind. So just a 35. Just yeah. a 35. Just a 35. Well, yeah. you scrape by this unattended door that <laughs> is a little lock. Um, yeah, so, um, the, the lock is, I mean, this is child's play to you. This okay. this lock... It's an administrative lock deep in a fortress city. Like no one, no one's expecting anyone to be looking at this. Door swings open, and you're immediately hit by the the musty smell of of old scrolls and old papers. It is it is a very quick and quiet open, just enough space for me to pass through, and like closing behind me. Great. Uh, you find yourself in a dark uh, storage room. There's a lot of um, like basically filing cabinets. Okay. Yeah. With, with devil's sight, I'm not going to light anything. I just will work in the dark. Sure. Uh, and I am looking for, can I tell how it's organized by like yeah, a client Yeah, the, the, the anything, system is or? pretty good. So yeah. if you're looking for the, the phylactery order, I'll make you roll an investigation with advantage, but you've got time. The only thing I've noted in this, this space you should probably be aware of is in the back corner, there seems to be a bedroll um, and a keg of ale um, along with like a, a stack of dirty magazines. It's very clear the wanderer has been hanging out back here. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do a Metal Gear and grab one of the dirty magazines and place it in <laughs> at the door so that if someone comes in, they look for the, they catch an eye, oh, uh, an eye I full of the dirty mag. I should read this whole magazine. <laughs> giving yeah, me precious seconds to react. Yeah, fair enough. All right, okay. I'll buy it. <laughs> Who am I to fight with a Kojima tactic, you know? <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, I am trying to find this. Sure, this sure, sure. Thing. All right. So give me investigation. Yeah, it's a porn hut magazine. <laughs> just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you say advantage, or we're just doing one advantage? Because you've got you've got time to okay. check it out. Investigation. Twenty three. Twenty three. Okay. Um, so you're able to find find it. It's obviously not labeled like the phylactery. Yeah, but. Mm -hmm. Um, there is, it's... It, Grace and Type is a secret phylactery project. Well, no yeah. reading. Well, I'm a, Keep out. You know, I'm Master expecting, like... Master <laughs> Project Lazarus or some shit. Uh, yeah, instead it's just an unmarked... You honestly, you find it because it's the only unmarked okay. thing. It's in, like, a leather folio that's been, like, bound and sealed and has a lock on it. You've obviously picked the lock pretty quickly. I would just like to secret that away into my cloak. Yep. Mm. And I am preparing to leave. Great. 
Um, you hear someone go, oh, yeah, yeah, I just got to go uh, check the back. I think, um, yeah, I think we actually, we probably have a store of uh, diamond dust maybe somewhere in the basement. So you know, let me go. I mean, it might take me a while, though. It might take me five to ten minutes, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe less. Uh, I'll be I'll be back. Again, this is why you need unions. This shit's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Uh, so the Wanderer um, uh, opens the door and his eyes fall in the magazine and he quickly like darts in and closes the door. And he doesn't do the like Metal Gear Guard thing where he's like, ooh, I should no. just read this. Dirty <laughs> I did magazine. not expect that much. Uh, but. but he does kind of pick it up. And it's it's like if you just find something in your house that isn't where it should be. Uh, as someone with a toddler, like frequently, I'm just like, I will find like a controller somewhere. I'm like, what the fuck? Why? Dude, I was walking through my house the other day. We hadn't been there in a couple days. And I like turned around and I was like, I swear that door was closed. <laughs> and like literally had to search the entire house. So I get it. <laughs> my only criticism is we're still calling him the Wanderer because we all know this is the Jacker. <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Um, <laughs> also, jackety, jackety Jack. The Jackety Jack. <laughs> don't come back. <laughs> uh, we don't know him. Um, well, yeah, your problem, Laura, is you just had a quitty nurse. <laughs> you just yeah. watch out for that. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, Jackety Jack uh, <laughs> picks up his uh, his magazine um, and he's like, how did you get over here? And then he looks up and he's like, oh, no. Um, and he says, listen. Whoever you are, we can make a deal. I'm good at deals. I'm very good at deals. So why don't you just come out here and I can give you some money and we can pretend this never happened. A voice from under the bed <laughs> says, how much? <laughs> This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Hamstra at EL Hamstring on Twitter, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra, and Dum Dums and Dragons artwork is by Del Borovic, who can be found at delborovic.com. Our theme songs are And Now for That Massive Coronary and Skipping Through the Orchestra Pit Part 1 by Peter Gresser, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R. All available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D U M B D U M B D I C E. And tune in next week for more Dum Dums and Dragons. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christopher Little, Sue One, George Dolby, Richard Cranium, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Logan, Fire on Friendly, Grandma Likes D&D, Alan, Stabby Stranger, Glitch Trick, Flynn1138, Alorain Okapi, OMG It's Big Nick, D&D and Things, Schrodinger's Pepper, Guy Edwards, Flea Unit, Madre de Gatos, Lady Maiden, Nithrian, Garbo Ape, Locke, Sam Schaefer, Waffle Marine, Dagger Rain, Rob L, Dia de los Hoodless, Diovasis, Loki Burrito, Squishy Werewolf, Remy, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs>